So after buying this at Walmart, I went, I really want to watch the Iron Giant and do a review of it. So I popped in my signature collection Blu-ray. I didn't get the $60 collector's edition, which I kind of actually wanted, but I didn't actually end up getting it. Popped it in. And if you want to know what the difference is between the theatrical version and the signature edition, the signature edition just, um, it's, a, it's the same movie, except there's a dream sequence with the giant, and he, um, where he, it's kind of like a flashback sequence almost, um, and so that's why, that, that's all that, that's all that's different, it's the same movie, um, that's why, in fact, when I saw it in theaters, I believe they played this version, and I gotta say, um, I'm just going to talk about my experience with this movie before I actually do, get into the review. I watched The Iron Giant first on VHS. It's not a talked about movie. I think I saw it before then. I'm not really sure how. Maybe some teacher showed it to me. But The Iron Giant is not that talked about. And so I assume people didn't like it. Quite the contrary to that. People actually love The Iron Giant. And... It's actually one of the most beloved animated movies ever made. So I was watch so I watched it on VHS and then, you know, I watched it at someone's house on DVD. So I've watched it on every format it's ever been on. Except for like, I don't know, Laserdisc or something stupid like that. But um Yeah, I I love the Iron Giant. I mean for crying out loud, I bought this twenty dollar figure to be on my shelf and it talks and it walks. And it lights up red. And I have some videos on my second channel. Chan's Random Vlogs. Where I show this baby off in more detail. If you want to see that. Um, I also have a hunting video. Where I found this guy. At Walmart. So that's kind of cool. If you want to check that out. That's on my second channel. Go ahead and do that. But I really love the giant. And. The Iron Giant. And you know. I've always loved watching on Blu-ray. And then me and my mom went one night and I sat down in a theater to watch this movie. It was it was like, you know, uh, my so if you don't know, my favorite theater where I live is Studio Movie Grill. And, um, you know, they, they were having over the summer. I hope they do it. Uh, uh, you know what? I, they can't do it because theaters are closed. <laughs> so sad, but... They were doing five dollar movies, ever for uh, just movies, uh, older movies. They did Blazing Saddles. They did Wizard of Oz. Uh, I went to a few of them, and you know I saw The Iron Giant because it was like one of my favorite movies. And you know I've always really liked the movie, but it wasn't until I saw it on the big screen with a crowd of people, to where I really realized, holy crap. This isn't just a good movie that I like. This is one of the best movies ever made. And if you've never watched The Iron Giant with the crowd, it is so much better than watching it at home. Because the people there, they usually have not seen it just once. Um, because the movie bombed. And I'll get into that in a minute. But they get into it. They cry. They laugh. They... You know, because there's lots of, there's actually a lot of comedic moments in the movie, especially with the giant himself, but also just with Dean and, uh, and stuff like that. And, um, you know, they laugh at all those parts. And I, you know, those are legitimately good parts of the movie, but, you know, they cry um, and stuff like that, too. I mean, people love this movie. It is phenomenal. Um, and why this film bombed. This film was directed by Dr Brad Bird, excellently, well, excellently, excellently well directed, I might add to that, and it is, it was a film done by Warner Brothers, and if you, Warner Brothers animation uh, studio was not doing so well at the time, they had a uh, quest for Camelot, which they thought was going to be a bigger hit, really bombed hard. They had Cats Don't Dance, which was like a film that they purchased, but it 
it bombed really hard. For them, they didn't really care, but it's still like, eh. You know, they weren't having much faith in animated movies at the time. But they were developing this Iron Giant movie, and uh, Brad Bird was directing, and they, they test screened it. And people loved it, and that Warner Brothers went, we have a big hit on our hands. They looked to Brad Bird and they said, hey, we need, we really want to move the release date of this movie uh, because we, we, we think it's going to bomb if we put it here. And he said no, because he believed that if he were to do this, the studio would just forget about it and not release it later. And now he sees how big of a mistake that was. And it's a shame because more people need to see this movie. This is, it's still more of a cult movie. I think it's gotten more mainstream with it being in movies like Ready Player One. Which was a really bad cameo, like, he's not a gun, and then they just made him a gun. And the reason he was even in that movie is because they couldn't get the rights to Ultraman, which is like, are you telling me that they didn't have the rights to any other robots, Warner Brothers? Like, there's so many robots in movies that Warner Brothers holds the rights to. I don't know why they did that, but yeah, so they made this character who's not like a gun, a gun. The whole point is he's not. Um... So, I think I think some of the aspects that are underappreciated that are really good in this movie are the score. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite film scores ever. It perfectly sucks you into the story, and and it's just beautiful. Uh, it makes you it, it, the music is part of what helps you make you makes you feel the emotions of the story, or like the Saturn moments, like when Hogarth is. Ex explaining to the giant what it means to have a soul uh which i i almost tear up every time i see that scene um and that moment has a beautiful score accompanying it it's beautiful uh and i think another thing that's very underappreciated is the amazing voice acting and dialogue the voice acting here is incredible everybody does a great job every single everyone in the cast they are amazing and especially the kid Hogarth, which at the time, the kid who voice act, uh, did, who was the, did the voice, he was actually a child at the time. So the fact that he was able to give such an amazing performance for a child is incredible. Like, it's amazing. Because um, most child performances are bad. Um, like, I know that they tried to do that with the Peanuts movie. And in the Peanuts movie, it, um, you know, the original shorts would do that too. But honestly, when you're watching the movie, it, the Peanuts movie, it worked in the original shorts. It just does not work in that movie. Uh, I think, I, I actually don't feel like most of the kids did a good job voice acting. So, but yeah, I mean, I like this movie a lot. It is fantastic. Um, I think why it's so good and why it's so beloved is the themes of the story. First of all, this movie is set in the 50s. And it brilliantly captures that 50s sci-fi aesthetic. Movies like Forbidden Planet, A Thing from Another World. You know, really, uh, you know, really good 50 sci-fi movies, just stuff like that. But, yeah, but at the, in the 50s, we were afraid of Sputnik. You know, Sputnik had just launched into space and it was a foreign satellite and the government was scared here in the United States. And so it's, it's about, and so, you know, you, through the character Chuck Mansley, you were able to explore that I, I, you know, what was going on in the culture and in the time with the paranoia of what was going to happen with the satellite and space. And it is fascinating. It is enthralling. And it, and you just see how much people were paranoid. And it's, it's such a really well explored theme within the movie. But also the theme of having a soul was it's just brilliant. Because they're doing it with a with this robot. A robot can't have a soul. It's a machine. We know this. But yet, you're seeing this thing that was made to be gun choose to be something else, as he says in the movie. He 
he is Superman. He is what he chooses to be. He flies up into space. You know, I mean, he chooses what he wants to do. And it's just, it's beautiful. Um, just such well explored themes that are brilliant, brilliantly put together and masterfully directed. Also, and the dialogue is great here because the characters just play off of each other well, super well. And it's almost like watching real people talk and have interactions. It is so immaculate in the way it is put together and presented. I also think the animation, of course, is gorgeous, but it's not just gorgeous to me. I think this is one of the best, if not the best looking animated films of all time. I mean, it is insanely beautiful, masterfully directed, beautiful themes, amazing score, voice acting, characters, art design, just so much here that makes this film as good as it is. And the animation, you know, a lot of things that get underappreciated in animated films is cinematography. But this movie has fantastic cinematography. Because, of course, in animation, yes, you're animating it. But you still have to frame the shot like as if you were to uh, do with a live action film. And it is, it is re re really well done here. It is so good. And I will always admire this film I think if you've never seen it you need to show it to everyone you know because it is so freaking good it is that good I'm not even over exaggerating but you need to watch it show it to everyone you know I mean it is just beautiful this is one of the most beautiful films ever made uh, it is one of the most emotional animated films ever made with Lion King the original Lion King not the terrible remake um, right behind it. 